And welcome back to the Career Hacking Village. One of the things that is always of interest to many people are the various different career paths that are available in government agencies and various different agencies that are part of national service. It is our honor and pleasure to have a group of people here to share with us the various different opportunities where talented professionals can work to support our country. I would like to turn this over now to Joe Billingsley, the founder of the Military Cyber Professionals Association. Joe? Hi, Kathleen and everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to lead the very first national security panel at the, uh, at the Career Village. Um, it's really inspiring the intent behind this village and also Jeff Moss's words about uh, connecting people with knowledge about different uh, career opportunities uh, for folks across the, the community here. So I'm really excited to be part of that and to introduce you to a number of friends and, and partners from different parts of the U.S. government who can tell you about different organizations and programs. And it's just a really exciting, all the different stuff that's, that's happening across the government and different opportunities to serve. Um, First, a uh, quick introduction of myself, uh, Joe Billingsley, founder of the Military Cyber Professionals Association, a 501c3 charity that supports STEM education for K through 12 and also active duty military and veterans. Um, I founded that with the motivation of, of us doing a better job as a community uh, for those who are in the service today and who might wanna serve in military uh, capacities in the future. Um, in addition to that, my day job, I'm a, uh, a government civilian employee over at a school called the College of Information and Cyberspace. Um, it's a really exciting place to work. Um, it has a really long history going back to the 1960s when it was the DOD Computer Institute or the Department of Defense Computer Institute and had faculty like the legendary Grace Hopper working there. So a really fun and exciting place to work that's also part of the U.S. government. Uh, now I'd like to quickly go down the list of panelists that we have here today. We have John Felker, who's the Assistant Director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, over at the Department of Homeland Security. We have Diane Janicek, the Commandant of the NSA's National Cryptologic School and also President of the Women in Cybersecurity Mid-Atlantic Affiliate. We have Chris Pimlot, the, an engineer over at the U.S. Digital Service. We also have Roman Vitkovitsky, who's from the U.S. Marine Corps Cyber Auxiliary. And finally, we have Liz Popiak, the recently retired Lieutenant Colonel, who helped create the U.S. Army Cyber Specialty Direct Commissioning Program. So with that, um, I'd like to start off and give each of you an opportunity to introduce yourselves and tell us about your organization or program that you're here to talk about today. Well, we'll get started with John. Go ahead. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today and to be with uh, some really great people that, that are interested in this, this effort, uh, particularly the efforts around the workforce. Um, so a, a little bit about CISA. CISA is a relatively new organization. Um, it was the, uh, it's been in a transition from a head DHS headquarters element to uh, an operating component since legislation was signed in uh, late 2018 that, that created CISA as, a, as an agency. Um, our, our major role is that we serve as the nation's risk advisor and risk in terms of both cyber, physical, and, and emergency communications uh, aspects of critical infrastructure and the federal government. So a lot of people don't know uh, what we do. That's it in a nutshell. Um, we have uh, basically five priorities that uh, are uh, the focus of what we do, um, all related around the federal.gov space and the critical infrastructure of the United States. If you keep in mind, probably 80% of the uh, critical infrastructure in our country is privately held. Uh, and so uh, almost everything we do is voluntary. And in, in that five, um, five level uh, priority list, election security, uh, maintaining supply chain risk awareness and countering, particularly from China. Uh, and that's um, most apropos now because of the, the rollout of uh, 
of 5G technologies, uh, protecting uh, federal networks, um, securing soft targets, so stadiums, um, churches, those kinds of things. Um, and then uh, uh, recently evolving, but always been important is critical infrastructure protection for industrial control systems. So all those systems that operate the electric grid and water, water stations and water, wastewater facilities and all those kinds of things. So it's a, it's a big mission. Um, we are a nationwide organization. Uh, we obviously have a headquarters element um, in the uh, Washington DC area, but we have uh, folks out in the real world too, uh, all over the nation in 10 different regions. Uh, supporting those uh, basic mission areas of, uh, of security for cyber, critical infrastructure, and uh, communications. Is that it? Great. Thanks a lot, John. How about you, Diane? Well, hello, everyone. Uh, so the Na I work for the National Security Agency, and it is an honor to be on this career village focusing on national security, because as we all know, cybersecurity is definitely a huge factor in our nation's national security and our economic security, right? Rests upon a secure digital foundation. So um, really a pleasure to be here. So the National Security Agency is a fabulous federal agency where I currently work. I also worked at a number of other federal agencies and they've all been uh, equally uh, rewarding and professionally satisfying. I've had experience at the White House twice, uh, the Pentagon, the Department of Justice. I've worked on Capitol Hill. I worked for the Judiciary Branch and, uh, and then in multiple elements in the Department of Defense. So fabulous, fabulous uh, uh, place to really spend your career or just spend a few years uh, working on the federal service side. It's extremely rewarding. The National Security Agency has an incredible mission. As we know, it really is there to protect our nation. So we have both a cyber, we have a cybersecurity mission and we also have a signals intelligence mission. And so I think a little bit further, we're gonna hear from Joe. He's gonna ask us what jobs are available and we have phenomenal opportunities to learn. Um, and they really are very professionally rewarding. And the people that you work with love what they do. You know, you want to work in an environment where people enjoy coming to work, enjoy working with you, and enjoying keep learning. So I have the tremendous opportunity to lead our, one of a, a premier learning institution for the National Security Cryptologic Enterprise, a global enterprise around the world. Uh, with tens of thousands of students across multiple disciplines, including cryptology, cyber language, and leadership and business. So I've, I've enjoyed every step of the way along my federal career and just really appreciate the opportunity to be on the panel. Thanks so much, Diane. How about you, Chris? You wanna unmute, Chris? Kind of focus right thing. All right. Hey, I'm um, I'm Chris. I'm an engineer from U.S. Digital Service. Uh, we are a group of technologists. We work across the government on a tour of duty model, so anywhere from like six months to four years. And we uh, bring together engineers, designers, product managers, and bureaucracy hackers to improve government services for the American people. Um, what's really great about U.S. Digital Service is we have an opportunity to work all across government with lots of different agencies. Um, so we have worked on a lot of great public facing services, making sure that we are trying to do the greatest good for the greatest number of people and the greatest need. Um, so projects like uh, VA.gov, creating a new portal that is user focused for veterans to be able to get the, the services and benefits that they have earned for their service. Um, working with US Citizenship and Immigration Services to help people uh, get green cards and their naturalization status is faster. Uh, Small Business Administration helping to help people get investments and start businesses and grow their community. Um, all sorts of things across the board. It's a really great uh, group of opportunities. No, thanks a lot, Chris, and especially thank you as a veteran. I, I really appreciate the work that, uh, that the U.S. Digital Service has, has done in that department. Um, now on to you, Roman. Sure. Uh, thanks, Joe, and thank you, Chris, for your help. Uh, as a recent veteran of the Marine Corps myself, after serving about 30 years, I was about nine years enlisted and spent the remaining time as an officer working in cyber and uh, communications. 
since then, I've now come in to join the Marine Corps Cyber Auxiliary. And with the Cyber Auxiliary, we permit we uh, facilitate public-private partnerships with the Marine Corps so that we can advance our national interests while keeping in mind the fact that people would provide national service in a context which is safe for all of us. Thanks, Joe. Wonderful. And how about you, Liz? Well, as uh, you mentioned earlier, I'm recently retired from the Army, a 20-year um, Army officer um, as a cyber warfare professional, and um, most recently was the chief of the branch at the Office of the Chief of Cyber at Fort Gordon, Georgia. Uh, the purpose of the being on the panel today is to talk about the uh, program that I helped create in my last few years of service called the Army uh, Cyber Specialty Direct Commissioning Program. And this program was um, the genesis of which was um, the recognition that there are concerned and talented um, civilians throughout our nation that want to um, serve in a capacity of which they can't do in their private sector. For example, maybe they want to um, exercise and project power through, in and through the networks and through cyberspace. And as a civilian, that can be something that maybe is not necessarily legal. So the cyber program here was created to find a way for them to come and do that on behalf of their nation, on behalf of their fellow citizens, also to defend our networks. As you mentioned, uh, Joe, most of the infrastructure belongs to private sector. So leveraging those pri public private partnerships, especially in some of the Title 32 National Guard organizations, they can do some of those things. So uh, for people who maybe who've maybe made their fortune, but maybe they want to come and serve, they can participate in this program. There are many requirements. Um, for example, there's a background check they need to pass to earn a top secret clearance. So that's something people need to keep in mind. Um, but the uh, this is something that I'm very proud to help build. So um, I was able to leverage my connections inside uh, the National Security Agency, uh, people in the Pentagon, Army staff, and other services to help bring this, um, this program to fruition. Thanks. Awesome, thank you so much, Liz. Now, with, uh, with the typical DEF CON attendee in mind, uh, somebody with serious technical skills, but somebody who, uh, who also may not have ever worked for or with the government, uh, can you please talk about some of the opportunities um, provided by those organizations or programs uh, that you're here to discuss today? And if you want to talk about some of the, the benefits of, of serving through those programs and some of the challenges, feel free to discuss those too. We'll get started with you, John, the same order, please. <laughs> okay, I didn't want to step on anything there, Joe. Um, so, so uh, you, you know, you talk about technical capability and, and obviously, with a focus on cyber, that's that's something that's inherent in, in what we do in CISA. Um, we we have, uh, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the, a lot of the work, almost all of the work we do, frankly, is is uh, voluntarily based. And so, understanding how different things work and being able to uh, link those things together, uh, create partnerships to um, to help. Uh, critical infrastructure better defend themselves is is essentially one of the core things that we do. So if you got a lot of really um, uh, high priced talent like we do, um, from any everything from intelligence analysts to to incident responders to threat hunters who, who go online, both externally and internally, uh, in, in the typical red team types, looking through uh, vulnerability management processes. Uh, and, and all the things you might expect from a technical perspective. And, and by the way, we're hiring. Um, and I'm going to say that probably six times today. Um, the, there are also um, uh, uh, less technical roles that we have in CISA that, that revolve around things like um, uh, governance, policy, practice, partnerships, uh, and things like that. Uh, so, so it's a it's a combination of technical and non-technical, uh, with a technical sort of a slant uh, to 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 help us do the mission that that we are charged with doing. Um, and I think one of the things that's important to remember is, um, with, with the stand up of the of the agency, we've had an opportunity to sort sort of reset the culture. Um, and one of the big things that uh, Director Krebs has been pushing uh, has to do with. Um, uh, personnel development. How do we develop our folks from start to finish? 
what opportunities do we provide them for training, for education, uh, opportunities to actually uh, practice their craft. Um, we, 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 we have folks that get to do really cool stuff every single day. Uh, and that's one of the, the great things about it. And if you want to encapsulate that all into to one word, uh, it's about mission. Uh, we, we have a great mission. We have some great people to, to work on that mission. And our, our objective is to, to train you, to develop you, and to help uh, make you as, as professional and as solid as you can be uh, to do what you're charged to do, uh, and then work you into our structure and, and get on with it. Uh, the biggest thing, and this is a personal philosophy of mine, is, is train them, um, uh, watch over them so they become good, uh, help them develop, uh, and then turn them loose and let them do their job. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of value in that. And by doing that, I think we create a, a cycle of of development. Um, and, and one thing to point out, too, and I think um, uh, Liz might have said this earlier, uh, it, it relates to in government and out of government. Um, I have no problem with people leaving CISA. I'd like to keep them. But when they go out into the private sector or they go into a different federal agency or a state and local agency, for that matter, um, we always tell them you, you're always welcome back because they bring another wealth of experience with them uh, if we provide them the opportunities to do that um, and, and encourage them to, 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 to grow and to build on their skills. So that's sort of how we look at it from my perspective, particularly uh, if we're going to point right at some of the typical um, participants at DEF CON. Well, thank you, John. And so the National Security Agency partners really closely with DHS and CISA. And so a lot of what John said definitely applies to my mission space. So to answer Joe's question, kind of, you know, what opportunities are available? I thought I might just mention a little bit more about what NSA does, and then I'll give you a couple of examples of things that you can do. The nice thing about the National Security Agency and the Department of Defense is that they are truly committed to lifelong learning. As we know, the cyber arena is so incredibly complex, changes every single day, the threats are different, the nation state um, adversaries keep using different techniques. So you have to stay you know, very active in your learning and that's on the job learning, formal training, um, and informal training and just a lot of opportunities. So that's the enterprise that I work run is the learning enterprise for so many intelligent, intelligent, brilliant people. You know, we have PhDs will continue to, you know, you have to, no matter what your grade level is in terms of your academics, you keep going further. So the National Security Agency is a unique asset for our country. We save lives, defense, vital networks, and we advance U.S. goals and alliances. So we're a, me a member of the Department of Defense and the intelligence community. So it makes it pretty interesting because your mission is so incredibly rewarding. And to mention what John said about going in and out of the, of the government sector and the private sector coming back, uh, we love that and it's valued and celebrated because the more talents and knowledge that you have, you're going to help us be better and help our country be better and really, really grow. So the National Security Agency is a world leader in cryptology, uh, the art and science of making and breaking codes, and it's an expertise that we get from people and technology, right? It's got, we really need that people component. So uh, if you find that, you know, the mission interesting, you know, definitely consider it. And so the reason why it makes it a little bit different is because for us to do our jobs well and really help our nation uh, be strong, we need to understand what our adversaries are doing, what the capabilities are, and we also be able, be able to communicate and exchange some of our information with our own allies and our senior leaders. So we need to understand what's going on and then also uh, provide for secure communications. So it's pretty exciting with SIGIN and uh, cybersecurity. So the opportunities are tremendous at NSA.gov. We have developmental programs. You'll even get, you know, you'll be paid to get, um, to continue your education while you're going through it. Uh, we have tremendous opportunities for positions. There's computer network defense analysts, computer network operators, capabilities development specialists. So folks that understand and provide real-time sensitive mission support by maintaining situational awareness of potential cyber threats, they leverage technical methods to manage and monitor and execute large-scale operations. So if you're, if that sounds remotely interesting to you, and as I said, we really just, we just want the best talent. 
if that sounds remotely interesting to you, I recommend you, you know, go to intelligencecareers.gov, take a look at that. And it might just be the time for you to take a look at it and really jump in. And what you'll find is people have a profound sense of contribution and service to the nation. We've had a number of incredibly brilliant people leave, do startups, then actually want to come back to the agency, not for the money, but because the mission and how incredibly rewarding it is to just be, you know, really putting Americans first. So uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, what we do, because it's really, really great. And I hope you join us. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, and yeah, so it's it, USDS, I feel, is a pretty unique position. So as, as an engineer at USDS, we, we touch on so many different projects. There's so many different um, opportunities that, that we have to serve and make an impact. So um, I would say just to someone coming to, to USDS, there's, you really have a wide range of opportunities to find ways to make a great impact on the public. And um, some of that is very technical work. Um, we develop uh, and ship applications. We we get websites working that crash. Um, we do security audits. We uh, you know we do discovery sprints and and dig through systems and um, give recommendations to help an agency uh, make improvements and make good investments in the technology. Um, but they all have in common is is a, a big impact and a big real world impact on the public. Um, like like. The, the others have said that the mission is really something that is, is just hard hard to beat. And it's also something that really resonates um, resonates with me, but it's just everyone that, that we work with. We're all here because of that. We're, we're here because we're, we want to, we are aligned on that mission to help people. Um, I come from the private sector. A lot of folks in the USDS do, and for a lot of folks, this is our first uh, job in the, in the private, in the public sector. Um, and so, you know, I've worked around places and uh, I've enjoyed my, enjoyed my uh, opportunities, but, you know, I was looking for something more and I was looking for a way that I could use my skills to really do, um, do the most that I could that really was, was worth spending the time and the effort to do, to, to, you know, pour my heart into all this work and to have it really be meaningful. Um, but I would also say that, you know, engineers, I'm an engineer, I love engineering. Um, I love talking about tabs and spaces and crypto and what language is better and which editor to use. Um, but it's also not just about engineers. It's, it's also technology is important, but it's also about solving the right problems and solving in a way that actually works for people. So we're also looking for great designers. We're looking for great product managers, um, people who understand the way that um, technology is not a tool and, and a website is not just a tool, but it's a service that needs to uh, be designed with the user in mind and uh, designed in a way that works for them and um, isn't just kind of made to tick off some requirements or some boxes. It's got to be thought through from start to finish as, a, as an experience for the user that really um, works for them. Thanks, Chris. You know, the Marine Corps Cyber Auxiliary is a unique organization, right? Like some of us here, it's a volunteer organization. And what we're trying to do then is enhance the Marine Corps' ability to operate in cyberspace. So we recently came across a situation where we didn't have formally trained and designated Marines in cyberspace. And it's only been within the last couple of years that we've had a, an occupational field for cyberspace operations. And we've now had the first Marines cross the yellow footprints at boot camp, graduate and enter the field to become cyberspace operators in the Marine Corps. We've had people operating the Marine Corps in cyber for 30 years, of course, but uh, we've always been organized somewhat differently. Now we've come together formally under the 1700 MOS field and uh, we are working together to, to move forward. What the Cyber Auxiliary does is it takes volunteers from civil service, uh, excuse me, uh, volunteers from the private sector and allows people who currently might serve, uh, serve billets in civil service or augmented through contractors or perhaps previously served and, were, and have been honorably discharged. And it permits those people who are US citizens, who have a minimum of three years experience in the cyber industry, who are highly regarded in their field and are enthusiastic volunteers. And it takes them, brings them forward to help shape, to train, to educate, to advise and to mentor the young Marines moving forward in cyber. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of those opportunities that have come across and where people have made a huge impact. Um, suffice it to say that the CyberOx is part of that larger Marine Corps effort to posture our forces, to operate in the information environment more effectively and were managed 
by highly qualified talent in uniform. And to wrap it all up, frankly, uh, like Liz can point out, if you are interested in wearing a uniform and popping back in, you've got an opportunity through her program. However, if you do not need to wear a uniform, and if you are not particularly interested in crossing those physical security, uh, those physical fitness standards of a Marine uh, of the military, you'll still be welcome to join us here at the Marine Corps Cyber Auxiliary. Go ahead, Liz. Yeah, thanks, Roman. So people who wish to wear a uniform, the uh, cyber specialty direct commissioning program might be for you. If it's something you've considered, you can at least uh, consider applying. You never know um, when uh, your particular skills may be in high demand to help your nation accomplish their goals. So, um, and if you also have a leadership, you know, streak, you know, say, yeah, I want to be a leader. I want to help um, coach, train, and mentor others, and I put my skills to work. Some of the skills that may are in demand um, as of when before I retired are um, software engineers looking for data scientists, uh, machine learning expertise, OpenStack engineers, ICS SCADA expertise. Um, I know John knows that's in high demand. Um, AI expertise as well. So there's, for example, there's a whole uh, center the DOD has built for artificial intelligence. And um, last I checked, Army was working with them to develop some requirements for uniformed um, Army cyber warfare officers to come and work there um, with those uh, folks at that joint um, artificial intelligence center. Um, a high, uh, high impact example of one of our direct commissionees um, was we had a civilian who felt like he had made his fortune and was a prior service individual, applied for the program and was accepted, one of the first two people uh, commissioned in the program, um, helped build the uh, virtual persistent training environment uh, for all of the Army's uh, cyberspace operators to use. Um, this was a program that had been um, developing for many years, uh, but was really able to kick it into high gear and apply their software engineering expertise and really get it um, built and out the door, functional, um, fully operationally capable for people to use. And I think people, uh, probably Diane at the agency may also use this um, persistent training environment that was built. Um, so um, you never know when you'll be able to have an impact until you try. And so I highly encourage everyone to consider um, serving in a uniform. Um, uh, you can find more information about the current requirements at uh, goarmy.com forward slash cyber. That's the website you can go. Those, there's a link there for the direct commissioning program and the current um, requirements should be listed uh, there for you to review. There's also instructions on how to apply. Um, so benefits of serving in a uniform. So um, there are many benefits, I think, that for uniform service. Um, the minimum number of years to achieve uh, some of these benefits is um, three years and I think 90 days. So uh, given a tour, you don't need to sign up for any longer than your first tour to achieve some of these. But if you're interested in, say, the post 9-11 GI Bill, um, for your own uh, professional education, master's degree, this can be uh, transferred to your children or even to your spouse. So um, that provides money for um, graduate level um, and undergraduate degree programs for them. Um, also access to a VA loan program, home loan program. So we will be able to afford a home with a 0% down, zero down payment on the home. That's something that uh, uniform members of all services have access to. Um, that might be attractive to somebody who's interested in buying a home. Um, you should also know for Sarbury Army Cyber Warfare Officers, most of our assignments are at uh, Fort Gordon, Georgia and Fort Meade, Maryland. So if you like Fort Meade and you like Fort Gordon, so please consider cyber warfare might be the branch for you. Um, we don't have many positions in places like say Fort Hood, Texas. That's not the place we send people. You don't have to be worried about going to Antarctica or Alaska or places that you, I mean, we're far from the locations. Um, and we also now have um, Army Cyber Headquarters is moving to Fort Gordon, I anticipate in the next year. And also um, Cyber Command Headquarters at um, Fort Meade, Maryland. That's another place we have a lot of assignments uh, there, but that's part of the requirements and there's developing uh, locations where you can uh, see future service. So um, some other benefits are um, listed at uh, militaryonesource.mil as a website. So in lieu of, of listing all of them, I encourage you to go visit militaryonesource.mil or goarmy.com forward slash cyber to uh, get that information uh, there. Um, and one other place you can get information if you have your pencils handy is to, on your phone, text to the word cyberspace, one word to 22828, and that will put you in contact with a recruiter at the Office of the Chief of Cyber, and they'll get in contact with you about uh, opportunities to serve. Cool. That was a that was a really great rundown, everybody. Thank you so much. 
Um, with us uh, running out of time, unfortunately, for this panel, uh, I just wanted to, uh, to go down the list one more time, see if you had any closing thoughts and words and, and any tangible advice that, that you'd like to share with the audience. Well, uh, sure. Um, obviously, uh, coming into uh, to government service has its challenges. Um, there, there is a challenge, obviously, between uh, pay in the federal government and other government and the private sector. Uh, there's the challenge of navigating the hiring process, which can be uh, very difficult in, in government. There's the challenge of getting the security clearance if you haven't gotten one already. Um, and if, you, if you're considering coming uh, to work with us in CISA, um, you can help us uh, to, to push the envelope on all those challenges uh, with the idea in mind that, that this is about the mission. Uh, and if you come in with a mission focus, you're going to have some great success. Uh, the collateral to that in my mind is um, we are trying to take what was a headquarters component element uh, now an operational agency and make a huge cultural change. Uh, and some of the things that we're pushing are innovation, um, speed, uh, partnerships, uh, and keeping it all within that mission focus. Um, so if, if you have the desire, we're looking, we're hiring. We, we've got uh, uh, plenty of positions both in the DC area and around the nation uh, where we're looking for uh, quality cyber talent uh, and people who have a mission focus. So I'll leave it at that, Joe, and I'll give it over to the next in line, John, Diane. Great. Thank you, John. And uh, I just wanted to say, you know, consider this opportunity for federal service if you have the, the remotest interest in uh, working with people that are innovative and passionate, love what they do, uh, continual learners, commitment to just partnering and collaborating is a great environment. Um, you know, and also want to mention for, it is a little more male dominated, as you know, but there are professional communities like women in cybersecurity that give you a sense of community um, outside the workplace to really help you get, give you the skills that you might need inside the workplace to navigate that. So love to see you. Um, and thank you so much. Yeah, I would just say definitely, um, I, I never really thought that I would necessarily end up being a federal employee you never really know what's going to happen. But, you know, we, as technologists, we have a really incredible um, amount of power with the, the skills that we have. And government is a really great place to make um, a huge impact with that power. Um, so uh, USDS, we have a unique model where we turn, so you do terms of service. So um, it doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. Uh, we can do as short as like three to six months and up to four years. So um, if you want to do that and then go back to private sector, then uh, we are very happy to, to have you uh, and have your impact. Uh, USDS.gov is our website. Um, and if you uh, want to see also more information about some of the work we do, at the bottom of the page, we have our impact report we just listed talking about some of the, the big projects that we've done in the last year, um, including uh, some of the things that, that I've been lucky enough to work on. Uh, but yeah, uh, we really are trying to break down that bridge uh, build bridges and break down those walls between private and public sector and uh, bring the best of private sector technology into government and improve everything for the American people. Thanks, Chris. We've all heard that advice. You should bloom where you're planted and there have been many, many opportunities to do that here. If you'd like to be a Marine, there is a path in cyber if you want to wear a uniform. If you find that you have other skills and perhaps you've held a career elsewhere in life, you can still affect Marines who serve by shaping capture the flag, uh, exercises and, de and developing other tools that might help Marines in uniform. You might you can also assist with our summer programs, helping with the young Marines and helping to the uh, helping with those who provide STEM education for uh, young people in our country who are then shaped to uh, serve themselves better through a cyber career path. As you move forward, one thing that I'd like to leave you with is you could follow us on LinkedIn and you can help to serve wherever you are in the nation today without having to wear a uniform but with having your heart in the right place. And that brings us to Liz. Thanks, Roman. So the um, two things to keep in mind with uniform service um, that may not be as uh, comfortable is uh, the physical training requirements. So if you're not familiar with some of the physical requirements for the different services, 
um, in particular, my experience with the, with the Army, you can find that on GoArmy.com. So the physical fitness test, you'll need to take that twice a year. And then you'll need to be able to pass those standards to pass your basic school. So that's really uh, very important to, to understand. And also keep in mind that you're a technologist, like as Chris was describing, you know, a technologist focus, but you're also a leader. So, and you'll be a leader of soldiers. Um, in the Army, an example, um, you know, the Air Force, I understand it started this commissioning program as well. So, Great. Well, thank you very much, Liz, and, and everybody on the panel, and, and Kathleen, and also Travis, and the other folks behind the scenes. The only things that I'm going to leave you with um, is a reminder about USA. Uh, jobs.gov, which is a, a huge database of uh, a lot of uh, opportunities for employment across the U.S. government. And also because I didn't mention it uh, earlier, uh, as a disclaimer, uh, everybody's uh, opinions expressed in this panel were their own and not necessarily those of any government entity. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Kathleen. Thank you so much, everybody. So great panel, everyone. Thank you so much. I know that uh, you opened everyone's eyes to new opportunities for their careers. I want the audience to know that also within the career coaches, we do have at least 40% of the career coaches have had some kind of government service or military service. So they are open to be able to provide you their perspectives and their tips on how to fulfill your career within national service. We also do have resume reviewers, recruiters who are familiar with recruiting for federal agencies and for government contractors. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you to all of our panelists. We'll see you for the next session.